bracket. And two feet. And that's the Wi-Fi dongle. Looks like, let's see. So these are screw in plugs for the, I don't know what the name would be. Not grommets. Yeah, for the bottom sections there. So almost like a blank. Wow, I didn't know it came with these. Uh, I did know it came with these. I looked at the manual, so these are the screws to, for the mounting plate. An extra pin for a cable. And some keys. I knew it came with those, too, for the cabinet. Uh, cool. The CTs are probably inside of it. Oh, no. They're right here. I'm assuming this is the CTs, but we'll see. Yeah. So here's the CTs. Cool. Yeah, and it's just a standard Ethernet. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. I can't wait to get this thing on the wall. Hey guys, so this is the EG4 18K PV. There's been a lot of buzz about this unit since it was announced that it was coming out, and for good reason. It's got some pretty impressive stats, and I'll go into a little bit of that later. But for now, I'm going to focus on uh, getting everything ready to get it up on the wall. So that was quick, right? Now, I wanted to discuss some of this stuff, uh, the specs on this inverter, and some of the, the cool features of it before I get too far into the video, and it'd be easier than kneeling next to it on the floor. Uh, after that, I'll show, after this, I'll show a little bit of what I did to install it. So this is a 12 kilowatt inverter. It is capable of surging up to 14 for 10 minutes and 16,000 watts for five minutes. So the namesake, 18 kPV, it can take in 18,000 watts of solar. So it can be, that can be used in different ways. So 12,000 watts of that can be used for charging, obviously for your loads in the house. It can also be used in a net metering to sell back to the grid. So there's a lot of different options with this inverter, too many to list here. I'll leave the link below so you can check this out as well as some other things I used in the build but it's, it's worth reading up on all the specs of this. If, uh, if you want uh, to use lots of grid-enabled uh, features, this has it. Uh, it also has all the UL listings to pass inspection easily, basically anywhere in the US. So it's, uh, it's got all the bases covered, pretty much. So this can be wired directly into your 200 amp service. So straight from the meter into this, and it can actually share loads and help the, the grid panel out. Um, obviously, if the power goes out, it can be set to take over. Uh, there's many different options. It has AC coupling. Um, so there's, there's too many to list here, like I said. Uh, but lots of cool features involved with this. Um, the voltage. So what this can take in as far as uh, PV, obviously 18K. But... 
In cold weather, we know that voltage spikes. So it can utilize 500 volts. And that's, that's where it's at, 500 and below. I believe it's 120 something to 500. But its max is 600. So there's headroom there. So if people uh, are in cold climates and they're wiring 500 volt strings, they've got plenty of room there. I'm going to have 500 volt strings here, so I might spike up to 550 or uh, maybe a little above in the winter. So it's nice to have that headroom there. Idle consumption, that's definitely a factor. My old MPP units, LV6548s, were 70 watts each. This is 70 watts total for this unit, which is really impressive considering the size and what it can do. So that's uh, something, um, even if it's a large system, it's going to leach on it, uh, even if you have a lot of battery storage. So it's neat that it's efficient. That's uh, very nice. Then Wi-Fi. The uh, Wi-Fi dongle enables you to monitor the uh, unit from basically anywhere, as long as you have Wi-Fi. They're talking about a potentially uh, putting a, a cellular option in there, too, for that. But uh, the Wi-Fi dongle also plays a part in being able to get help from Signature Solar. I got an email when this unit was shipping that you can schedule a commissioning date with a tech uh, service so they can actually help take a look at the unit, uh, monitor any settings or you know tweak things as you need it. So that's going to really help Signature Solar and the user. The user, even if they're not a first timer, is going to benefit from uh, somebody being able to help them all the way through remotely. And... Uh, Signature Solar is going to stay ahead of potential issues that way. So really good idea on their part. So now I'm going to jump into the build video. I know uh, there's probably a list of things that I have forgotten. I'll try to put them on the screen. I am going to be covering other things coming up. So here's the outside of the inverter, uh, the PV on and off switch. This is where the Wi-Fi dongle goes. This is the on and off switch. And then uh, these are the clips that they send with it. I need to get a washer and a better screw for those. So these latches are really beefy. And they each come with a lock on them. And they send the key with the unit. So I'm going to cover some of this in my install video. But I put the CT in. If you are wiring this in your actual service panel, then this would go right after the meter in your service panel, the CTs would. They send a lot of cable with it, but you can also extend it too with a ethernet cable. So this is PV1. Both of these are actually PV1. That's uh, something I wanted to cover here. These two can be parallel. So if you have a larger array, and you're sending in two different strings, they would parallel into this first one. So this is the, the first PV input. So uh, I already have mine paralleled outside uh, because I had a uh, combiner box already out there. But essentially, yeah, like I said, this is a miniature combiner box. So you could, if you have a large array, same voltage, same location, they, you would send two strings in here and it can take up to 25 amps. These, this is two and three, positive, negative, positive, negative, and those can take 15 amps each. So this is the one here that confuses some people. I've seen questions online about it, uh, but yeah, this is just a parallel miniature combiner box inside the inverter up to 25 amps. I don't think I covered this in the build, but this is your battery breakers, 200 amps and your AC load breakers. So I've already pre-drilled my holes here. This is where I'm gonna be setting the bracket. I had to remove this one section here because I have two by fours and two by sixes running through that. I have a metal building here, so I have them running in different directions for support, but I just happened to miss them where I'm at here. So I just had to run um, some two by six uh, reinforcement here. Um, yeah, above this, Above where these brackets are, it looks like around two inches to the top of the unit. So the top of the unit will be somewhere up here. Um, also, I did want to mention, oh, they, they send these lag bolts with it. 
So that's what I'm going to be using. If you're using, uh, if you're putting anything in masonry, brick, block, stone, concrete, uh, then they send these wedge anchors for that also. So these are pretty beefy. Um, below the unit, you want seven and some change, seven and a half, something like that. Uh, so I left eight. But from the bottom of the unit up, it's like 22 inches or so to eye level for the screen, so the, to the center of the screen. So wherever your eye level is, you basically uh, want 30 inches from your eye down for clearance uh, for whatever you're gonna put there. So if you haven't already run any wireways or duct work, uh, just keep that in mind. Also, these are designed for eight by eight ducts. So you can work it work uh, with a, a thinner wireway, but you're gonna have to bend uh, the conduit. So yeah, these are made for an eight by eight to be able to to run straight in the top, straight down vertical. Since this unit is waterproof, or water resistant, I guess people say, they send these here. So any of these holes that you're not going to use um, for, for conduit, they have these uh, little tabs to go in with a rubber or washer on the bottom. So I've got other stuff that I should be doing here first, but before I forget, because I am going to forget this if I don't do it. This, these are the PV inputs, and you may have seen on Will Prowse's video, he mentioned using a long, thin screwdriver uh, to put the PV in. He didn't mention it has to be bent <laughs> like mine, but um, here, let me get in here and see if I can get a close-up of it. So you put it in there, and when you pry up, see it opens up there. So yeah, that is the best option. It's really cool, actually clamps closed on it as soon as you let go yeah i ran out of white tape I'm not sure where it's at so i'm going european here for a little bit and putting <laughs> putting blue on my neutral until i can get another roll of white tape if anyone's if, if it looks intimidating to anyone seeing all this it's actually easier to wire um, at this stage than uh, 6500 you've got lots of room and you've got uh, lots of different neutrals to attach to there and uh, two different grounds. So, so far, very, very easy to wire. And uh, it's, again, really a large compartment to work in. So I'm sure I'll fill it up by the end, but yeah, so far, so good. Looks like the ground lug is an M5, if I'm not mistaken. They recommend six gauge wire for your ground. I have a, a larger gauge here, so we'll see if it fits. Yeah. So that's a three gauge. It's always nice to have those little details in the manual. It even says how many people should help lift it. They went to a lot of detail on this. Torque specs. Tells you what size um, bits to use to tighten everything down. So yeah, really nice. So the unit's laid out pretty nice. Here would be power coming in from the grid. Here is the output, so the loads being generated from the inverter. 
This is for a generator. This is all pretty basic because you can see it all right here. Very easy to understand. And then there is two inputs for the battery. You can use one 4 aught or two 2 aughts or even two 1 aughts. 1 aughts is allowed as long as it's going to be under 10 feet, I believe it is. Might be under 7. I'll have to check again. Well guys, this will probably be it for me for now. Start again tomorrow because my feral crimpers walked off. When tools start walking off, then it's time to quit. <laughs> so all I'm gonna do now is tighten these down. Let's see, where am I gonna want it? And then call it a day. There's a, the uh, solar input the PV input, sorry I'm blabbering, but the PV input needs ferrules on it. So I'm gonna put some 10 gauge ferrules on them. I guess I'll buy another one and that way I could have two of the least used tools that I own. <laughs> All right, I've got the CTs hooked up. And so I'm about to fire it up with the, I've got a pre-charge, use the pre-charge resistors on it first, but I'll turn, both the battery breakers on. And I'll use the pre-charge resistor on the life power battery. That's it. And it's on, super cool. Okay, cool. All right, well, I've got some work to do on settings. I gotta take a look at everything. So that's gonna about wrap it up, guys. I've got uh, a lot of load testing I'm doing now. So it's cycling on and off, but it really has to get to around 6,000 watts or so before the fans even come on. So I've got my dryer running and a couple other things. So as they cycle, it'll go on and off, but uh, essentially silent other than that. So in the next video, I'm going to go over, uh, I'm going to put the Wi-Fi dongle in. I'm not very tech savvy, so we'll see how well that goes. Um, then uh, I'm going to be putting the PV in. That's pretty straightforward, but I'm going to be wiring the solar in. And go over some of the settings also. So, and I wanted to say that as far as first impressions, man, they're very positive of this inverter. I, I really like it. Uh, wiring, I mean, you could almost crawl inside the wiring cabinet. <laughs> You've got so much space in there. It's very easy to install. Everything's clearly labeled. Uh, like I've said before, the manual is very descriptive. You can, you can understand everything about it. So it goes into great detail on pretty much everything. So really, really positive. Uh, also, I think I forgot to mention that this, uh, normally a split phase inverter, you're limited to around half because you've almost got two separate inverters in one. So half of whatever the capacity is. So let's say it were, was 12,000 watts. Then you would have six and six. But in this inverter, it actually uh, has an 8,000 watt imbalance. I'm going to try to test that, see if we can get eight on one leg uh, coming up. So that's really cool, though, very unique. And then also I wanted to say that I know how it is when you want to know more about a new product or if you've just discovered a product and you want more detail about it. So if there's anything I can help with, let me know. I'm using this inverter in kind of the most, um, maybe one of the more boring ways <laughs> right now, similar to a 6500. So it's powering a critical loads panel. Um, I can power the grid with a lockout breaker. But uh, other than that, yeah, there's a lot of grid options that I plan on utilizing in the future. But if I can help out with measurements or anything else, let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching, guys.